Hello YouTube, it's Steve O Trucker here. Welcome back to my channel and uh, to all those who are new, hello, welcome. Um, well, today we're going to talk about, I'm trying to think what we should call this. We're going to talk about agencies effectively, by the good and the bad, or, you know, what are agencies all about? Or, you know, are they good long term, short term? I would highly start off with agencies suit some people 100% for their life long career they won't have any of the issues I may mention or very little depending on the agency you know there is exceptions that's all I'm trying to say you know just don't take everything I say as gospel there is always different agencies and I've worked for a fair few in my time driving let's talk about the good um, varied of work so you, you don't have to be at the same employer all the time generally you be at all sorts of employers you can also be based out of a single employer if they have a long-term contract with a uh, a holiday company which you know if you want a bit of job security that can sort of offer it not um, that will come up with more the negative points you probably get the hint on that one already other positives, you can be on more money, dependent on the agency and a few other factors and how busy they keep you. Bear that in mind as well, that falls onto one of the other negatives. <laughs> Sorry about highlighting the negatives here, but I have, have to say it because a lot of things that agencies always say to you is that you, you've got a secure job with us. But what they don't fully mean I'm not saying this goes to every single agency, the odd exception, I have seen it in some agencies that they do compensate you if the jobs are a bit quiet, but they actually don't always mean pay security. What I mean by pay security is that compared to a full-time job where you know you're going to get paid for your contract, e.g. the most common five days a week, you'll get paid at least the minimum, you know, what's required. It's normally about eight hours, day. eight to not nine hours a pay. Yeah, that's about what I think that's about right. Don't hold me to it, but that's the general rule of thumb. Um, what other pros? Um, if you're self-employed for agency, equally you could be on more money as well. You can also have a choice of what type of work you want to do which is another pro you know so if you get bored of doing one thing you can always ask the agency could you get me onto something else a bit different or actually I quite enjoy this work or you know if you're a good agency they normally try and sort, sort you out um, he, and this boy now touches more onto the negatives but equally is a cop pro as well is uh like anything, like like companies themselves, like you know, hillage companies, you have good ones and bad ones. You know, you have ones that will keep you busy, who look after you, and you have ones that will take the mick. You know, they will try and put your work as soon as possible, even within your legal limits. Now, when you highlight it to them, it's just like. But you do have to stand your ground with those ones. You do have to, you know, because they will take the mick. And they don't care fundamentally if they destroy your licence from doing it. Or, you know, make you break the walls if you were to meet what they're asking. So always keep an eye on, uh, on your working time, driving time, your weekly limits. Because that can be some... But that's in general, even that... If, even full-time employed, that can be the score as well. In in terms of if you were employed by a hillage company directly, and that falls upon you know good and bad, which is pretty like for like there. Um, there is probably a lot of other pros. Uh, try to think what else. You have flexibility as well. Really, you're going for an overtake with oncoming cars? Muppet! Muppet! <laughs> Sorry, just had a car. End of a double lane. 
went to overtake me, then he went on to the other side of the road with oncoming traffic. Luckily, there was still enough gap for him to get through there, just. But it just shows how stupid people are at times. Never mind, it is a bank holiday weekend. Um, yeah, you have flexibility, so if you want to have some time off, you can have more, probably more time off than somebody who's on contract or, you know, full-time employed with a, uh, with a regular. You will get holiday pay at quite a few agencies these days, and it's normally down to, based upon how, how much you've worked for them. So if you work full-time, you can get anything like normal holiday for, for most companies, like 28 days, even more. Uh, there can also be fuel fuel weights as stock well, fuel weights yeah, don't indicate lots of love people don't indicate that's how it is a bank holiday sorry about this guys the joys of driving on the bank holiday weekend <laughs> the muppets are out yeah so That's a lot of the positives there. I, I don't want to knock agencies too much. I will talk a bit of the politics while I do knock it at the end. Negatives. That companies can phone up and cancel work. And a lot of, com lot of agencies won't pay you unless if you have actually gone out or headed out to get to the customer. Because if they cancel before that and your agency phones you, the general rule of thumb is you won't get paid. Uh, but if you get to the customer and they cancel you and you're there You normally get eight hours of pay so actually the pros and con there, you know It's you kind of laughing your head off because you've got eight hours of pay for doing nothing <laughs> If you get there, but obviously if the agent phones you up and says like you've been cancelled off mate You know sorry, we'll try and get you on to something else. So I do try and get you on to something else but you've got to be flexible and to be aware of what the following plan is. Will it have an effect on the next day? Because I've had it before where they phoned up like lunchtime after I've been cancelled out at, you know, six o'clock in the morning. Can you go and do this at uh, two o'clock? It will go in late into the evening. And I'll, I sometimes have to highlight what's the score tomorrow because originally I just normally you know what you might be doing the next day. You might go, I'm on this at six o'clock fine day, that might interfere with that wait time. And normally at a workaround, it or they might go, oh, actually, we'll see. They'd normally find a way around it or they'll rearrange your week a wee bit. Um, as I said, it normally falls down to how good your agency is. That does as well. Um, other negatives, obviously, you can go for quiet spells. Now, uh, this brings up another big positive, and this is a positive if you are a new driver. If you're struggling to get a job with an employer, which is very hard when you're a new driver, unless you get lucky. I'm not saying it's impossible, it is very doable, but depending where you live, you might struggle. It's like we are. like there's an event on or something which is causing a lot of traffic yeah so if you're a new driver agency is the way to go seriously to get yourself going even if your main objective was my main objective was to get full-time employed at the end of the day because I saw some of the neg negatives I and mean, actually it's good for short term good for six to twelve months to get myself some experience and also, agency's been also really good for when I've been in between jobs and stuff like that. It was, you know, when I've been changing job or actually I've, you know, had enough of, you know, when I went back into the army, now's the army, you see his agency then as well. It's a car boot or something. Oh, it's a steam rally.
Yeah, and um, but there is a lot of insecurity with agency. Some people love that. That you know, it, it can be so varied. And if you're a lot of person who likes a lot of change all the time, or potentially a risk of change the following week or next day, you know, in terms of who you're working for and what type of work. But as I said, if you're new to the industry, it is the way to go. It gives you a bit more experience. It also opens your eyes up to different jobs you may have not considered within the industry. Still driving, but you know, flat work, curtain side of work, tipper, you know, because agents do the whole spectrum. Um, other negatives, other negatives. Uh, you can, and I don't agree with this off other drivers, you know, company drivers on the odd occasion can sometimes clash with you. Well, I can see why, but I don't agree with it. But it leads on to all the reasons why I don't like agencies too much in terms of how... But it's not necessarily the agency's fault directly, it's just how... what a mess the industry is in, in general. Is that, you know, there can be a bit of jealousy between you know, the full-time employed truckers and you yourself as agency going into a company sometimes, on the odd occasion. It's not really common, but it does happen that you might meet a driver who has it almost for you, even though it's not your fault, your agency, it's your career path. You know, and primarily because you will tend to be on more money than, at most places you go work for, you'll be on more money than the full-time employed drivers, potentially. Yes, there is reasons for that, because they have job security, you know, etc, etc. Their pension scheme might be a bit better as well. They might have some benefits. But equally, depending on the agency, you might have some benefits as well, and a pretty good pension as well, dependent on the agency. Uh, what else? Negatives to agency. So the main big negative is the fact that you can be cancelled off work, and you can lose pay from doing that as well which is kind of a big negative, it is quite contradictive at times, especially if you go for a quiet spell and they can't keep you busy. And this is where my advice is, if you are going down the agent's route, have several agencies at the end of the phone. Just for when you have a quiet spell, so you can give the other agency you might not use all the time, a quick buzz, so do you have anything on? You know. <laughs> But bear in mind, you've got to please several masters then. You know, you, if you neglect one agency, they won't consider you, and vice versa. So you try to please two sets of companies, effectively, and, you know, try to find a fair balance so you stay legal and you're able to keep working at the same time. Uh, what else? Du -du 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 -du. I might leave it down the negatives. I mean, there seem to be a lot of positives there. If there is, you know. But it doesn't offer proper job security. I'll say that. At the end of the day, if companies don't want to have any agency drivers going to them, you've had it. <laughs> you know. But my big advice for new drivers, it, it is the way forward at as the industry stands at the moment, it is the way forward for you to gain the experience. As I said, even if you're desperate to be full-time employed, and that's your main goal, keep it as your main goal. But to get the experience, because you find why you're getting turned down or not looked at, if your brand's banking you, is because you have no experience, or very little. Now normally you have to at least get a year's experience in, but if you're doing agency at the same time and somebody phones you up, curious, I did because you'd say I'm doing agents at the moment, you know. And they might go, actually, how long you work for the agency for? Ah, okay. Have you done any work for us? Oh, yeah, yes, you have. Okay, bonus. Now you're selling yourself. Um, the gripes I have of agency are very similar to the fact that they can be on more money than the full time employee drivers at companies in not all the time but at most tend to be the case let's say which to me isn't the agency's driver's fault but it's just how everything's set up 
also the amount that agencies charge companies you'll be surprised is an awful lot yes obviously they got to profit from it they are a business themselves and also they pay the drivers off that as well so you could say it's fair enough but you know it is a little bit mental in some ways uh, it also, can, as I said, as I touched upon, it does create a certain division amongst drivers. And I don't agree with it, because no matter if you're an agency driver or full-time driver, you are a driver. You are meant to be as professional as each other. Maybe lucky in experience overall. But, you know, no, one, no one's equal. As long as both drivers are keen to learn, keen to work, keen to crack on with their job. I said the divi division thing can be very real because you know you can get to some companies and you won't be helped out whatsoever because as soon as I suss out your agency, good luck. Or you'll be mugged off by the company that's taking on. Yes, you can report it to the agency, but you'll find out very quick in the industry if you have a complaint, you may be listened to, but anything comes of it, very unlikely. Yeah, so, uh, and I do think agencies, and that's, I want to highlight again, it's not the agency driver's fault, okay? So I don't want people getting my weight with agency drivers after this video. Seriously, don't. The drivers like us, they, they want to pay, we want to pay. You know, we all want to be employed. You know, they chose the agency route, doesn't mean they're wrong or right. You know, same as a full-time employee driver like myself. It doesn't mean I'm one or right, you know. But the issue with agencies, they are one of the causes why pay is low in some sectors of the eight or the most highly demanded job side of the industries, you know, where they're desperate. Because these eight these companies that are struggling for employment are the heavy users of agencies they've got contract the agency have obviously bidded and how it all works and for some bizarre reason if it even if it costs them more yeah you know, I've done the maths it is mental but for some reason they prefer to have agency to fill the numbers than take on full-time employed I can probably see why because it's less risk and that could be the case that they don't have to pay the pensions and stuff like that liability is low then for them lower than it would be as if you're full-time employed so it is equally the company's fault as well but agencies are more the reasons why the way to pay is staying low in the most demanded areas and I want to highlight again it's not the agency drivers fault they're just doing their job at the end of the day they're not the ones who set the way to pay Yes, you could look at it, oh, they are one of the cause. If they walk up, they have now cost the company that, so they can't raise the pay. That just gives big companies an excuse not to raise the pay, because so we're getting our shortage from the agency drivers, and we don't have as much liability for them. Great. Because quite often, the agencies will be effectively insuring their drivers as well. So that's another reason why big companies love agency drivers because they can also just basically use and abuse them as well which is a negative for the agency drivers that they can be used and abused obviously companies that are well known for it when you get some experience in the agency you do try and keep away from them you do say oh, I don't want to go mad for them but if you're desperate for work you might end up having to go mad for them And yeah, I'm going to say this once more, I have nothing against agency drivers, seriously, I do not. We've all been, well most of us have been there, you know, I've, I've been agency driver several times through my driving history, you know, so you can argue I have no reason to have any qualms of an agency driver. And I don't, I don't see why there should be a division with the drivers. The issue is, is with the agencies and the big companies at the end day, the big hillage companies, you know, the, main offenders within the industry 
and agencies do have the place, but they are they have become at that level. So I'm just keeping eyes on these drives they make on the, the end of the double section. Yeah, so as I don't make this a full-on rant about agencies at the end of the day, but it's just to get word out there what the politics is with agencies. That's not the full politics, there's more to it than what I've just said, but in gist, that is what goes on. Something may disagree with me that no other causes why pay stays low in the industry. If not, why do you just go agency? But that leads on to the pros of being full time employed, or so called pros, you know, in some cases. But, as I say, you sometimes have to go through the bad to get to the good. And this is where the experience build up is key. When you start off, you will be at the bottom of the pile. You might get lucky, I'm not saying you won't. You might get with a good company straight away, or a good agency straight away. You know, you might not like, you might go full time, want to be full time, you might not like full time because it doesn't give you any flexibility. You might go agency and actually not like it because there's no job security or you know in terms of pay and also maybe changing around too much isn't your cup of tea especially if you want to go tramping you know i said the, there is always the exceptions to the rule of thumb but as i said my main issue is with the state of the industry with agencies and because they are being overused and abused by the big companies which is a good thing for if you're an agency to a certain degree to a certain degree as I said you could be used and abused which in some ways I might be on less pay and not be abused <laughs> or pushed to the limit yeah so Tell me what your thoughts are on agencies. If uh, you are a driver, you know, what's your thoughts? You know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have any points to add? As I want to highlight strongly, I don't have anything against either or, full-time employed or agency drivers at all. You know, and I don't want to create a division. It might seem like it. No, I don't. And I want to strongly highlight that. I know some people go, oh, agency drivers off this, oh, they're the cause, oh, no, they're not. I said, they are just the foot soldiers, like you are. You're number one beyond steering wheel. You know, they've got bills to pay, we got bills to pay, we're in the same boat, you know. And yeah, there is good companies out there that do use agencies. Mine uses agencies on occasion, I know that. Not maybe on my side, but on the other side of the country they do on occasion, what I've heard. But it doesn't mean it's a bad company if they use agencies, you know. But normally it's the big companies you spot where there can be major issues. Yes, there's the odd small one that can use and use agency. As like I said, it lowers the liability down for them, you know. <laughs> Especially if they're doing work that it's very hard to keep the drivers in. But a lot of the knock on the, this leads down to the politics of the industry is that one of the reasons why there's shortage generally in these companies that are really desperate for drivers and they're really over using and abusing agency drivers is because A, the full time employment pay generally is not good, they might not treat their own drivers very well, the conditions might not be very good. You know, the whole spectrum of reasons why, normally there is a reason why. If a company has a major shortage of drivers, you've got, and this is the issue of the industry, you know, the industry is that, stuck in the past, that, you know, it can't see its own failings. It admits that there's a shortage, but compared to any other industry that would go, oh, there's a shortage, instead of getting loads of agency in, most other industries would say, right, What's the issues? Pay. 
conditions, how they're treated, you know, what what you know what might be holding people back get, getting into the career, is it the cost of getting in, you know. The common sense in most industries would just raise the pay up, make the conditions a bit better, and then normally it might take a few years for it to tick over properly, you normally sort of turn it back around. But no, in the hoodage industry, or the transport industry, good luck. You know, it is industry that is stuck in the past. In a lot of accounts. No, it seems like it from the driver's perspective anyway. So, yeah. So, at the end date, tell me what your comments are. What's your feelings? You know, my big advice is agencies are brilliant if you're new to the industry. You know, they are really good to get you that bit of experience to see what type of work's like, different, you know, give you a taste of different spectrums of the work and to give you some experience in different ways and that, that than you would if you went full time. But I'm not saying don't go full time straight off, you know, if you can get full time and you want to go full time, do it. But if you're struggling, go agency initially, keep on applying for full time positions. You might find your full-time employer through the agency. I've done it a few times. When you get to like a company, one of the best things i found to do is actually, when you've been working for them a bit through the agency, is to ask them to look at the openings. And quite a lot of the time, you actually, if they have openings, they might go, actually, yeah, come in at such and such, we'll get you on the, on the books. You know, and you give whatever notice. But sometimes I'm a bit hesitant because Depending on what the contract is between the agency, that can be issues as well, because they can get fined off the agency for nicking their staff. You know, so you're in an awkward position because you know you might not want to go back to the agency after. You know, depending on what terms you left on, it's good or bad. Or yeah, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching this. I'm, I'm not trying to create a decisive video about agencies. It's just the pros and cons, and just talk about a little bit of the politics that goes on with the agencies and the industry. As I'm, I'm all open ears for your thoughts. I know there is drivers who love agency, 100%. It's the best thing since sliced bread, and fair enough, they enjoy it, which is great. No, and as I said, there is always exceptions. Um, okay, let's end it there. I'd like to say a massive thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, I wasn't ranting too much through it. <laughs> and uh, to all those recent subscribers, thank you very much for subbing. It is seriously very much appreciated. Um, uh, da, 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 da. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Also check out my Facebook and Twitter. And as I've said before, feel free to comment down below. You know, if you have any suggestions as well, please feel free to comment. And look forward to the next, uh, next instalment. Thank you very much for watching. Over and out. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side